We have won the, the battle, but we have lost the war. Why do I say so? Since the inception of the Speaker of the new constitution, this is the first time an impeachment of a cabinet minister went through the second stage. Uh, after collection of the signature, approval of the Speaker, and then it went through the House and went to the committee. I remember in the earlier two parliaments with the Speaker, it never used to go past the, the uh, tabling of the motion, Mr. Speaker. So we have made a progress, and I want to thank Honorable Wamboka, who remains a hero, Mr. Speaker, in this country, for taking the initiative to save the Kenyan farmers, Mr. Speaker. I, if you watched, because the proceedings were live on TV, Mr. Speaker, what Honorable Linturi was talking about, instead of telling Kenyans how fake fertilizers found, found itself in the, in, the, in the market, he talked about the famous episode, the soap opera of his love gone bad, Mr. Speaker, with the Honorable Keitan. Mr. Speaker, if we continue like this, then in the national holidays, when people are given honors, Mr. Speaker, we should add corruption as one of the honors that is awarded, Mr. Speaker. Corruption should not become a badge of honor in this country, Mr. Speaker. How can this House preside over a committee report that has turned the will of 346, 49 members upside down, Mr. Speaker? And they know very well the mood of the House was that they want the minister impeached. Now, it is now the, the responsibility of the appointing authority to sack that minister as late as, as early as this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, if you are in mature democracy, this cabinet secretary will have resigned long time ago, Mr. Speaker. He will not have been in office by now. He will have left the office, and because he has no moral authority to serve Kenyans anymore, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this parliament cannot be used as a rubber stamp, the way I see it happening today. If the fake fertilizer thing has gone the way it is going today, then fake medicine will go through, fake water will go through, fake everything will go through in this country, and the people who are going to suffer in this country, Mr. Speaker, is the Kenyan people, Mr. Speaker. If we were elected, and this is not what the Sunni East people today expected, Mr. Speaker, when I saw the constitution of the committee that was done by the majority leader, the uh, <laughs> Give him two seconds. Mr. Speaker, when I saw the constitution of the committee that was done by the majority leader, the seven members from his side, I knew this is an exercise in futility. I knew the matter is dead on arrival. I could see the faces there. I know them. I have been in this corridor. I have been in this parliament long enough. I have operated in this corridor of this parliament. I knew this better complete. No report. Nothing useful will come out of the committee. Thank you very much. I submit the speaker. Kimani Chungwa. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I hear what the leader of my, uh, the minority whip is saying. And it is true, Honorable Speaker, that if you have been here long enough, like the Honorable Jeanette Mohammed and many others, including Robert Mbui, who was a member of this select committee. You would know then that impeachment of a cabinet secretary is not a matter that you vote and make a decision based on emotions. It's also not a matter that you decide based on whether you like somebody or you dislike them, or whether they answer your calls or reply to your texts, it is a matter that is based on the law. Honorable Speaker, the preliminary objections we had from the Honorable Tiende Amolo and the Leader of Minority speaks volumes to the issues that I was speaking to here last week. That one, we sought to impeach a cabinet secretary without duly considering the provisions of Article 152 of our Constitution, and especially so Article 152.7, and our standing orders from standing order 64 to 68. Honorable Speaker, you remember me advising the Honorable, uh, the sponsor of the motion, the Honorable Amboka, that if I were him, I would have been patient to allow conclusion, a logical conclusion of the inquiry by the, a committee of this House under the leadership of the Honorable Mutunga, the Committee on Agriculture, that I would have been patient to allow investigative agencies to investigate and see if there's culpability on either the cabinet secretary or any other public officer before proposing an impeachment motion. Honorable Speaker, this report, as you said, it is good for academics. 
and it is important that all the 349 members of this house read that report so that they understand that impeaching a cabinet secretary can never be anchored on our feelings, our emotions, and whether we like somebody or dislike them. That we must ensure any time you want to impeach a cabinet secretary or a public official, it is based on what is provided for in law. Was there a particularity in the allegations in that motion? I submitted the Honorable Speaker last week that the motion was laden with generalities and newspaper articles and therefore would never have passed the test of time if you subjected it to the provisions of the Constitution, our own standing orders and indeed precedents that has been set by courts of law. And I pointed out the famous Wambora cases because Governor Wambora, Honorable Speaker, you know, you remember, is one of the public officers that were impeached more than any other public officer. And therefore, I want to urge members, Honorable Speaker, that this becomes a learning, a lesson to learn for us as a house. If we propose motions to impeach cabinet secretaries,